Hey guys, full slash polygon here. Welcome to part 10 in a pure sky to character building. Last time we went down to New Londo, took out the four kings and placed the Lord Vessel with Kath. This time we're headed back to the Tomb of Giants to finish our partisan, take on Nido first of the dead, and get our second Lord's soul. Woo! Okay, here we go. My apologies, I felt like being a little bit goofy. I figured since this was a slightly shorter episode, it called for a slightly shorter intro. Hooray! We are heading for the Tomb of Giants. I spent a couple of points to level up at that bonfire. I put them in faith and vitality in equal measure. And I think I'm going to start doing that from here on out, just to balance damage with survivability. This is also kind of where being a little bit clever with your bonfires early on can come back to bite you in the ass. We went down to the Tomb of the Giants circa part 6 to grab the large divine ember and some chunks, just get a little bit ahead of the game, and we didn't sit at any bonfire. So as a result, we have to slog all the way back through the catacombs. It's not too bad. I sped it up. I'm going to take some drops just to kind of show you the route and shortcuts that I usually take. Small price to pay to grab those items early on. We're also going to have to face a similar situation when we head for Lost Izalith. Upon defeating Quelog, we did not sit at the little firekeeper bonfire with the fair lady, so we're going to have to run back through Blight Town. Not too bad, though. The catacombs are pretty labyrinthine. They can be a little bit of a drag to run all the way back through, but there are some nice drops that'll spit you down by the bone wheels. Very near the boss arena. In fact, if you come down here when uh, Pinwheel is still alive, old Paladin Leroy... We'll have his summon sign right here on this platform, just waiting for you, just waiting to help. If for whatever reason you find yourself in a need of assistance against that godforsaken buffoon of a boss, Pinwheel Paladin Leroy is up here waiting for you. He's got your back. And Paladin Leroy, man, aside, always makes me giggle. Just the name. The name seems so out of context in this dark fantasy setting. Paladin Leroy. I always imagine him is part of an order of paladins with his brothers, Paladin Tyrone and Paladin Billy. I don't know, that's not canon. Paladin Leroy is, but Billy and Tyrone definitely are not. So pretty quick run back to the boss room and now we're headed to the Tomb of Giants. We're gonna take a minute to uh, break Pinwheel's old table to fuck your experiments. Whatever you were up to, I'm pretty sure it was no good. So we're just gonna continue to disrupt his research. Now the plan, we're going to blaze pretty quickly just through this top part of the Tomb of the Giants. Man, I just realized I still have my Covenant of Artorias ring on as well. Should have swapped that back out for the wolf. That's kind of a waste. Ooh, that's some Illuminati shit right there too. So we have on the Covenant of Artorias ring, which we got from killing a wolf. And we're going to replace it with a ring emblazoned with the symbol of a wolf. The wolves are trying to tell us something. I don't know. Just being goofy again. <laughs> it's actually not that interesting at all. Just a funny little coincidence. Anyways, we, we cleaned this place out pretty good with our earlier looting run. There is the covetous silver serpent ring we could pick up from here as well. I'm just going to let that go. That increases the souls you pick up from just about anything. Killing enemies, they'll give you more souls. Nice little bonus there. That can be handy if you're trying to grind out those last couple of levels to bring your character up to 100 or 120, wherever you're ultimately going to take them. Because it can be pretty tough in a single playthrough to get all the way up to a PvP meta level. I actually don't grind in-game enemies for those last couple of levels. It, to me, it's just a lot more fun to go out and host somewhere and farm invaders. Just do some PvP, kill some invaders, because unlike in Dark Souls 2, man, invaders in this game drop a pretty healthy chunk of souls, and that can be a lot of fun and a lot more lucrative than farming enemies or whatnot. I did want to make one more pass through Patches, a little trap too, just to see if any of these bone towers drop chunks. We're looking for one last chunk to ascend to our partisan. We can pick one up later when we get uh, a little bit deeper into the Tomb of Giants. We'll pick up two later, actually. But, I mean, any any bonus ones would be nice. And after that experience with the uh, Four Kings, man, I, I want to finish off this Partisan, man. That This thing was doing absolutely chip damage. Not even chip damage. You can get hurt a lot more through a shield with an elemental weapon than we were putting out just plain against those Four Kings, man. So we want to upgrade this thing pretty quickly. 
a little deeper in the level, we're also going to snag the uh, White Titanite Slab. The one and only free White Titanite Slab in the game. No, that's not true. They added one in the DLC. There's one down in the Chas Chasm of the Abyss as well. So there's two White Slabs per playthrough. And then I think there was uh, Pinwheel Servants, the regular enemy pinwheels, a little deeper right before you take on Nito, have an extremely rare drop for White Slabs. In the same way that the Dark Wraiths down in New Londo mostly drop chunks, but one out of, I don't know... 300 might drop you a slab. I just made that number up. That's not official. But it's a very rare drop. So you can farm slabs, but it takes a long time. We actually only have an interest in this one weapon. It might be nice to have some extra slabs to dick around with some other stuff down the way too. But by the end of this run, our partisan will be fully upgraded. Plus 10, divine, and we'll be good to go. Then we can do 128 damage against the four kings instead of 103. We're still rocking our Skull Lantern as well. We'll be fine with that. It's much, 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 much easier to come down here with the Sunlight Maggot if you did uh, Lost Isolith first. And I'm kind of amazed by those Sunlight Maggots too. Specifically by their, I guess, post-mortem bioluminescence. Like, after you kill them, they still continue to glow. These guys too. These uh, undead dogs. Man, these guys are no joke. They have that attack, that charge attack, man, that seems to ramp up from nothing. And all of a sudden, you've got this undead dog on top of you and watching your health bar go very quickly from red to empty. Reminds me a lot of those torch hollows, too. Those guys are completely harmless, except for this one little charge attack that just chews you up. I'm swapping out to a shield here. There is a black knight rocking a halberd waiting for us on the other end of this fog gate. This kind of freaked me out, too. Like, he insta-phased through that thing. That really freaked me out. I don't, I never knew this before, but I can assume or gather from that that the fog gates as an obstacle instantly dissipate as soon as you initiate walking through them. They don't have to actually disappear on your screen. So that guy kind of spooked me something fierce. I'm having trouble parrying him. That's not all based on the fog gate freak out though. I always struggle to parry the halberd timing from these black knights. They have a lot of delay in their swing, so I'm always way too early trying to parry them. I ought to go out uh, and just practice against them, just to get used to it. But no worries. He drops us a chunk, 100% guaranteed drop from that guy. We would have gotten our chunk there anyways. I guess we didn't have to mess around with those bone towers. We're currently just on a hunt for that second bonfire. There are two bonfires in the Tomb of the Job. Man, swap out your ring! Oh, that's gonna bother me every time I see it. Manage your equipment a little better than I am doing. Yeah, two bonfires down here. You can warp to the first one. The second one is, it's an okay placement. I think it's a fair placement. It's not as close to the boss as a lot of people would like. So in the event Nito takes you out, you do have to run back to him, pass through some of those undead dogs, pass through the pinwheel servants in the interior. It's not the most convenient thing, but I think it's decent. That's this one right here. Little dog followed us as well. And also, I almost fell off earlier too. I find when taking some of the shortcuts or drops, it's a lot better just to walk. Don't run, definitely don't roll, because a lot of times the momentum will carry you right over the narrow ledge that you're trying to plop down onto. And there are some absolutely stellar shortcuts through the Tomb of the Giants. If you're interested in speedrunning this place or just getting through it as quickly as possible, not picking up any of the items, just blazing right through to Nito. Hit up YouTube and look at some of the routes in here, even in pitch blackness. Really clever stuff. You roll and slide down walls and land on platforms you didn't know were there. I have seen that stuff, but I'm not terribly familiar with it. I haven't practiced it, so I didn't want to attempt it on camera. Maybe I'll go back and uh, work on that and then try and make an appendix or something for a later one. But if I, I, I assume if I attempted it here, we'd just end up at the bottom of that weird, misty, glowing blue lake down there. And this is the final part of the Tomb of the Giants too, so not a bad run. I was talking about the placement of that second bonfire. You can bypass all the dogs and just run through to get here. Nice thing is this place is illuminated. You don't have to mess with your lantern, you don't have to mess with any maggots or spells or sorceries or anything like that for light. This place glows for some reason. I wish I had taken a look around and see like where is this light actually coming from? So you got the mysterious light. Further mysteries in the Tomb of the Giants. Are this place itself, man, I've always been really curious lore-wise about the Tomb of the Giants because I don't really understand how it fits in with the rest of the world, right? Maybe, man, maybe it's just as simple as, I don't know, when giants die, you gotta put them somewhere. 
because there are there are clearly giants in Lorden, right? You got the dudes in Sen's fortress dropping concrete marbles and hawking fire bombs and pulling chains when they hear the tolls from the bells of awakening. Open the gates of Sen's. You got Hawkeye Goth that you meet later on in the DLC. You've got the giant blacksmith in Anne Orlando. I don't know. Maybe it's just this is where giants get buried. Can't fit them in the catacombs because the catacombs is sized for people. So once upon a time, the deity said, yeah, I don't know. We got dead giants. We got to put them somewhere. Let's grab ourselves a cave, build some giant sarcophagi, and that's where we'll put them. What should we call it? I don't know. It's a tomb for giants. How about we call it the tomb of the giants? Awesome. Thanks, Gwyn. That's why you're our leader. But I'm not sure. If you have any insight on that, hit me up. I'd be very curious to know. And for now, I guess we'll just assume it's simply a tomb for giants. Did grab our slab though. We got a little decision to make. Should we bone it back and upgrade all the way, or press on to take out Nito with our plus nine partisan? I'm gonna do the latter, because simply having a divine weapon is a hell of an advantage in that boss fight. We'll talk about that down the way, but let me first call out my friends, the Skeleton Babies. Phenomenal source for farming humanity. These guys drop hard humanity, the actual little black sprites that go in your inventory. This in the Chasm of the Abyss are some of the best places to get humanity in the game. The best places. They're not too dangerous. They infinitely spawn from this water. These pools of the dead, I guess. I'm not sure what kind of magical properties the water has in order to have babies forever coming out of it. And it's, it's decently safe as well. Those babies, they can gang mob you. They can swarm you and maybe bite your feet, pound on your shins, whatever skeleton babies do to harm the player character. But they are nowhere near as dangerous as the plague babies in Demon Souls. Not the same ballpark. And now we got Nito. So there's a big fall leading down to him, and it hurts. So if you have any kind of uh, fall mitigation equipment or fall control, the sports sorcery or something like that, use it. Otherwise, I like to have heal or humanity on me, so when you hit the ground and take your initial damage, there I just noticed my Covenant of Artorius ring. So like, what? Swap it out to the wolf. Get back my unsightly black aura that suggests I have a free 40 poise. But yeah, the fall will hurt you. I'll pop off a healer of humanity because usually you have time to do that before Nito notices you and starts sending minions your way. I like to save my Estus for the fight proper because it can get pretty chaotic down here. Now, in addition to Nito, there is an army of skeletons down here, both human-sized and of the giant persuasion. There's a Gravelord sword dance from Nito. Actually, I bet that's a Gravelord great sword dance. I assume that the leader of the Covenant can cast the better miracle. So that's probably a great sword dance. Didn't hurt us too much. I rushed in here to spam some Wrath of the Gods and just do some initial big damage and try and clear out some of the skeletons, at least temporarily. Oh, 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 that was ballsy. Oh my heavens, chug, 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 chug. Almost over before it began. In a lot of ways, Nito can help you clear out the skeletons as well, temporarily, when he fires off his AoE. That does hurt them. Now, good lord. He's getting spanked around this little carousel of an arena. Now, if you stay towards the back of the cave where you fell down, the giant skeletons often will not aggro against you and you can just deal with the little guys and Nito as he inches in closer. You do need to watch out for his uh, AoEs and his sword dances. He can hit you from pretty far away with that thing. But with our divine weapon, just like the skeletons in the catacombs and not having to kill the necromancers, our divine weapon can perma-slay these guys. So I'm just gonna keep running laps, take these guys out one at a time, and eventually get it down to the point where it is just me and the first of the dead. Even without the divine weapon, you can still utilize that carousel technique. Just keep circling around that center column. The skeletons will try to chase you, but their primitive pathfinding can't always keep up. It's usually pretty easy to get some distance, take a breather, do a heal, and then pop Nito a couple times when you come up on, up on him the other side. And I mentioned not aggroing these big guys. So right when you drop down here, if you don't stray too far from that spot, those giant skeletons are hanging out all the way at the very back of the chamber, and they will often not enter the mix. Needle will approach you with some of his little skeletons, the human-sized ones, but it just makes things a little bit more manageable. And I will say, I think the trick to this fight is managing the bones, man. The skeletons can be a huge distraction in terms of interrupting your swings, 
interrupting your castings, just getting in the way of your attacks actually hitting Nito. So doing whatever you gotta do to keep those guys at bay is the trick to winning this fight. One on one, Nito is not that bad. He's big, he's slow, he broadcasts his attacks, and he doesn't actually have that much HP. Compared to the Four Kings, like our Wrath of Gods from the beginning, doing 528, 526, whatever the number was, it moved his health bar a hell of a lot more than the 528s against the Four Kings. Usually best just to unlock and run sideways to avoid those sword dances as well, versus trying to back up. But I'll trade with you all day, buddy. I like Nito. I, I like his association with the Gravelord Covenant, and how logically you can't advance any further after you kill him. We'll go for one last poke. We send him into negative HT, HP territory. Got an achievement too. Weird. Stab it. Stab that achievement. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I've gotten a couple achievements over the course of this that once upon a time I had. A while ago when I uninstalled this game, lost all my saves and then reinstalled it, I lost all my achievements as well. So every now and again I get these weird pop-ups. I don't know what happened. Steam bizarreness. But that's it for Nito. Yeah, you can't upgrade with the uh, Gravelord Servants any further after he's dead. It makes sense. He's the dude that sponsored your membership. He's the guy that you offer your Eyes of Death to. So just keep that in mind. You can still use your Gravelord powers. You just can't rake up any further. But that's it. Tomb of the Giants, done. Two Lord Souls, done. I think in the next one we'll probably start thinking about some fashion. We might head for the Duke's archives and advance things a little further. So as always... Let me know, what did I miss? What did I get wrong? What did you do differently? Feedback is greatly appreciated. And I will catch you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.